First up is Million Dollar Baby. Matt, first, I gotta say though right away that I need to watch more Hilary Swank movies because holy shit is she amazing in this. Like, wow. I just, I don't know how I haven't watched like all of her movies because hot damn, she's great. Um, so yeah, Hilary Million Dollar Baby is a 2004 Best Picture winner uh, starring Hilary Swank, my second one. Uh, it also has Clint Eastwood, which, who directed it as well and then Morgan Freeman, and then like a bunch of other actors who would go on to do lots of other really great stuff. Um, but yeah, this movie is phenomenal. The basic premise is Hilary Swank is like a 30-something, and she wants to become a boxer, and she wants to have Clint Eastwood train her because he's a great trainer and stuff. Um, and this is, so, you know, it's about boxing, but it's like, it's one of those sports movies that's not really a sports movie. Like, a sports movie, the big climax is like, the big game, the big fight, the big whatever. But like, the climax of this movie is not that. Like, there's definitely like, a big fight, or a couple big fights and stuff that happen, but like, the end of the movie, it, it goes in a very unexpected, but it, it, a way that makes sense direction. Like, it, it's, it's definitely a turn, um, but it, it definitely makes sense in context. Um, yeah, it's just great, though. Um, I usually think they could have made this as just a, just a boxing movie, um, and it would, have been, it would have done well and would have been probably made some sequels and stuff, because legit, it is super satisfying to watch Hillary Swank beat the shit out of people. Like, it's just, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, like, click something in my brain. I'm like, yeah, no, this is good. This is good. Um, but had they not done the other stuff, it definitely wouldn't have, um, it would not have won Best Picture. Uh, and they, they made the right call in, in doing that. It's actually based on a short story with the same name. Some people have the misconception this is just a Rocky clone. It's definitely not a Rocky clone. Um, if you think it is, even after watching it, you need to rewatch Rocky because this is nothing like Rocky whatsoever. Um, also, so it's definitely a drama, but like it's surprisingly full of like really funny moments, especially in the beginning, but also a few towards, towards the end. It's like I was legit laughing a lot. I was kind of surprised. Man, Hillary Swank, I just, uh, she, is, she is something else. I'm surprised she hasn't been like a Marvel superhero yet because like in this, she is freaking ripped. And I'm sure as like, you know, it's been 16 years, I'm still sh sure she can get back into great shape and stuff. And like, yeah, I need to, I want to watch more of her stuff. I'm really excited about this. But yeah, I really like this. I definitely recommend it. It's a good one. Uh, be prepared for lots of emotions though, because it's, 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 it's a sad one. But it's a good one. It's real good. So good. So good. Now on to, yes, God, yes. This movie just came out on VOD, and it stars Natalia Dyer. Look at her there. She's so tiny. Uh, and basic premise is uh, Natalia is a Catholic schoolgirl at the dawn of this last century, and uh, she's kind of discovering her sexuality um, using the internet and stuff. Um, but she's also riddled with Catholic guilt, and so she's like torn on, oh, what, what kind of person? What's she going to do? How is she going to be a person? How to be a person? Um, and then they also go on like this little fun Catholic retreat thing, and yeah, it's great. It's based on a short film of the same name, by, named by the same people. Um, I'd say don't watch the short film if you're going to watch the movie. The movie's actually pretty short. It's only 70 minutes. Um, and it's actually pretty light, too. There's not, like, a whole lot to the movie, but it's still, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. It's really just a fun nostalgia trip, remembering, like, how, how like, the day, early days of the internet used to be and, like, all the silly fun stuff we used to do before smartphones were a thing. Um, yeah, and it's great. I do think I would have connected to it a bit more had I been, had I been Catholic or, like, raised in, like, a really res um, restrictive religious family. My parents were very loosey-goosey, so, like, that wasn't a thing. But I could, I definitely knew people who were raised in, like, the same environment as her, so I can definitely, I can still relate, just not as deeply. Um, and also, it's just, it's nice to have a movie that explores female sexuality, um, that's something that's not talked about as much. And I definitely noticed a few people who were just hating on the movie simply because it dealt with female sexuality. And I'm like, okay, buddy, just it's it's okay to acknowledge that other other genders have sexuality as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. 
I was going to say, just based on the trailer, I thought the movie was going to be more funny than it was. Um, because what it definitely was funny, but it wasn't like constant rolling on the floor laughter. Um, but it was it was really solid. I definitely recommend this one as well. I put it in the really liked one, if you couldn't gather by all the words I said. Um, yeah. And again, Natalia Dyer is just, she's so adorable. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. And lastly is The King. So this is a 2019 Netflix movie. Look, you can see the word Netflix. Uh, starring Timothy Charlemagne. Look at him. Uh, and then it's also got Ben Mendelsohn and Robert Pattinson. Um, and yeah, I kind of had high hopes going into this one. Um, it was still, I did not I did definitely enjoy it. I ended up putting it in the liked category. It just didn't kind of blow me away as much as I was expecting. Uh, the basic premise is it's it's the story of King Henry V. Um, it's that story has been told a bajillion times. I mean, it's a freaking Shakespeare play, and this, this movie's based off of Shakespeare, and it's also based off of history, kind of a mixture of the both. Um, and yeah, it was it was decent. Like he, uh, Timothy always does great. He can't not do great. Um, so do all the other actors. I particularly really liked Robert Pattinson. I don't know how historically accurate his character was, but he was just ridiculous, and I loved it. Yeah. It wasn't slow or anything, but I definitely think there was there were bits they easily could have cut out to kind of make it just feel tighter and feel faster and just kind of be more not cohesive, just better, I guess. I don't know how to say it better. Um but yeah. And then another thing I did really like, I really loved the last battle, the big battle at the end of the movie. I thought that was great. It was really gritty and ridiculous. It was just kind of like a bunch of people in armor mud wrestling and that was great. Um I don't know how historically accurate that was either. I don't think it really was, but it was still solid. Um, I think, I kind of think they should have just like made up their own story instead of just going off of King Henry V. Um, or just found like a different king that's worth telling a story about because there's plenty of like royalty stuff throughout all of history that's interesting and hasn't been told a million times and they could have done interesting things with. But instead, we just do, let's just do Shakespeare again, because why not? Because everyone loves Shakespeare. Also, the last thing I'm going to say is, so, like, again, Timothy Charlemagne's great in all the stuff he does. And, like, he he was, I think, 24 when he made this movie. But he looks like he's 18, 19. So he's going to forever be a teenager. He's just got that baby body. Um, and so, like, at the beginning of the movie, I kind of looked up to see, oh, how old was King Henry when he became, when he became king? Um... And he was, I think, 27, or he was late 20s. And I'm like, okay, why did they cast someone who is younger than this, younger than the actual age and looks even younger than his own age? And then, like, the movie ends, like, years have gone by, so he's, like, in his early to mid-30s by the end of the movie. And it's like, dude looks like a freaking teenager. Why the hell did they ta cast him as this guy who's supposed to be in his 30s? It... It doesn't look right. Again, he's a fantastic actor. No no shame on him whatsoever. It just... Why? They should have just made up a story. Should have just made up a story. Again, I did like this movie, though. 